Okay, we're going to make a bench to put between the two stumps that we made. And we're going to start out with one sheet of expanded metal lath. That's 8 foot long. I believe 24 wide. 27 wide. And we'll fold it a little bit. And start now with a sheet of plastic on the ground because we pour concrete. The concrete is not going to stick to the plastic and we will have a relatively flat surface on which to work. The other stuff, more expensive stuff, had a poor spot on it. Gotcha. Didn't think about In addition, we have three eight-foot pieces of rebar. I'm going to cut those so that they're the same length as the reinforcing expanded metal. Leftover pieces will make cross pieces to go in and tie those together. I'm going to cut those with a sawzall.
step is to wire tie all those pieces together. That forms the framework of our bench. Again, we've got our three sand to one cement mix with acrylic and the liquid and fiber in the mix. And we're going to cover this no more than the outside edge because this is going to be the bottom. And when we flip it over, we'll do the extended sides. All right, there's the bottom covered. We'll let it sit overnight. Tomorrow, we'll flip it over. We'll do the top side, make it overlap the sides, and then we'll finish it. We now have two tops made, the bottom being covered, two benches. We're now going to do the top covering. 3 to 1 sand mix and then we will start our finishing process. First thing we'll do is wet things down with some acrylic act as a bonding agent. helps to prevent it from corroding. It makes the whole structure last longer. Okay, that's all wetted down. And now we got a three to one concrete mix. Three sand, one cement, the acrylic liquid. And we're just going to add a layer. This 
first. Manager cracks. cement as far as the edges go wet brush Perfect. Let's do some do some knot holes. We'll go do some more. A couple more. You think about when you look at the end of a piece of wood, the flow and xylem tubes that come up. They cut off at the end and they make holes in the end to the ends of the board and just take a broom and stab them like that and there's your zone with Fallman's Island tubes right there. Right. And then of course if you want it's also going to split there so you can make some cracks in the end and make some minor cracks this way. Start making some lines that simulate the grain that is already cracking open, you know. Lots of 
That's nice. Let it cure and then we'll stain it. And we have a wooden patch. It weighs about 200 pounds. <laughs> I'm going to come back with, I don't want to get too much dark in there because I want to leave that light. And I'll come back with some of the lighter stuff for there. There'll be more. This is tote. Now here's the bottom of a bench that's been coated and allowed to set. It's a smaller one. That's the first coat. This will be about four foot long. Now we're going to turn this over and we'll put the finish coat on the other side. Okay, Denny, let's flip this puppy over. Sure, what? Plastic. Let's just grab the plastic and left. Fingers under there, we go. Rolls off. Put it down on that side. You can see the rebar in the. Yep. And now this is ready to be coated with concrete on this side. And uh, if you look, you can see the embedded expanded metal and the expanded the some of the pieces of the embedded rebar and we'll be coating that later okay here we have a plank that's going to go over the tree stumps to make a bench And this is uh, 
been turned upside down, the bottom's been done. Now we're going to do the top. And this is probably going to take at least two of these loads of cement. Let's see how far this one goes. And we're going to make a <clears throat> board here that looks like it's been out in the weather. Maybe been driftwood. Gonna age this thing. And for this mix, I used uh, play sand. These uh, seems down here. Tennessee, I can't get decent sand. One of the sands we purchased was nothing but ground limestone, which was just about worthless. The other was so coarse that it was close to being pea gravel. We're real happy with it. Anyway, we'll go around the edge here with this. Starts to stiffen, make it a little easier to work. And we'll be back a little shortly. Yeah, it's had a chance to stiffen this slightly. I have a bucket of water. Get my truck, my uh, margin trowel a little damp. And what we'll do is we'll start working this, going back and forth, and round these edges. Chip brush is very lightly. I'm going to work these sides, these corners. Keep going in one direction. Chip brush will actually add a little bit in the way of grain effect. And now we're ready to do some things that are going to make this look like weathered wood. First of all, the edges are all rounded. 
Sides are a little uneven, ends are uneven. But we're going to start by making a crack. And I'm just going to take, angle my, I'll make a great big crack here. side. Let's kind of make a big groove. And then we can take feather that out. crack has to go all the way through the through the end so we're going to make that crack extend out the side and then maybe we'll make another one right here and this one will be let's you know, see there's a fiber catching on the trowel a little bit another crack Just a little crooked. No, in any wood, if you look at old wood, you'll find they have knot holes, cracks. So let's put a, let's put some knot holes in here. A knot hole is kind of round. This is where branches come through. I really should get a utility knife to do this. But a knot hole is just going to be generally round like so. And then uh, the pith of a branch is going to be in the middle and that will have cracked radially like this. I'm going to make some radial cracks and they don't have to be exact. Now the grain that runs this way through the board is going to be uh, it's going to go around that. So we'll do some shapes like this. Grain comes around. Throw some grain in here. Like so. And that's how then we can extend some fine cracks in the grain. This you can put as many as you want. Depends on how cracked your you think the board is. 
So there's a there's a knot hole, and uh, let's uh, let's put another knot hole, say right here. I'll make this one a smaller one. I'm not trying to do faux bois here. I'm just making something that kind of looks like wood when we get finished with it. Make some cracks, roughen that up a little bit. And then, of course, our grain is going to go around that knot hole. We just put some grain in it, that's all. Hi, Mike. No, it's Denny. Oh. Okay, we're going to take a break here. Yeah, this one I think maybe I'll make a third. Not hole. Let's do a little one down here. Now, not hole is just a circle, or a rough circle. The branch came out. Big enough, you can show the pith. And then they always radially crack. They put lots of cracks in here. Go ahead and leave it rough. Okay, so there's a knot hole, and now the grain always comes around the knot hole. some more in here. And then we'll put more grain in here. And you do as much or as little as you want. Uh, we're really going to try to make this realistic. We put some real fine grain in here. But I just throw some lines in where some of the grain has dried and cracked open. And uh, that's how you put a knot hole in. Okay, let's go over to this end. Take a look here. Again, and uh, wood grain's going to come here, and you're going to have cracks this way too on the ends. Have some multiple cracks that way. Come down this way. Also, raise this way. Doesn't have to be that fancy. You take some of them on through. Make some grain. Make some of these cracks. Go from the end onto the wood. The end is drying out and splitting. And that's be the small cracks you would see on the end of an old piece of wood. And just make it look like that. You can then take a you take a brush, usually I like to use like a scrub brush, and poke some holes. These would be the tracheids that would be showing up in the end. You know, the xylem and phloem tubes that move through. So you want that to be looking kind of rough. And uh, it starts to look like wooded wood. So I'll put some more grain in here. cracks. Like so. Really that's about all there is to it. And now you have a piece of wood. 
Well, I gotta go down the other end and do that end. But that's gives you the look of weathered wood. And uh, when it's all dry, then we'll we'll stain it. All right, here's our board after it's dried overnight. Pretty quick. I'm going to be able to color it, seal it, and it will be ready to be put together as a bench. Okay, this is ready for coloring. Put a number of colors on. The first one I've mixed up is cordovan leather. It's kind of a reddish color. I'm going to zoom in on a knot hole to show you where I'm going to put that. Okay, so should have brought some of my small brushes with me, but let's get to deal with what we got here. corner get it wet with the stain I'm going to dab that cordovan leather in this middle part turn kind of a reddish brown as time goes on and we'll do the same with the other centers of our knot holes. If we need to darken them up later we will. And now we'll put some random streaks on this cordovan in our wood. Got them at Harbor Freight. Don't have one of those there. Ah, I might be able to use these sometime. There's a package of them with a couple of different sizes in it. Uh -huh. And there was like eight or nine brushes in there probably. that color into a little bit here and there. Okay. And most important of all, this color which is called taupe. Essentially brown. 
stronger we put it on, the browner it'll be. I'm going to lay this as the foundation over most everything. heavy in the deep cracks. light gray wash. Give it a real weathered look. Let's do it. A little stronger solution. I think this Tope is kind of losing its punch. Been around for a while. You gotta let that sit for a while until that develops and then see what the color looks like. It's a good idea. In about half an hour or so. These are the two stumps we made that are going to serve as the bottom of the bench. There is the completed bench. Here is a bench we completed last year. Two stumps. And This is the first one we made. Here's another that was completed last year. And this one. A little darker. Oh, we even made it look like somebody carved in it. Those are my brother's and his wife's initials. And this one sits beside his fire pit. And there's the pond. And that's where the other bench sits.